What are you doing here? Is Joseph, the owner, here? Look at the mess you made with that sack. Huh? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Wait till the owner sees what you've done! This man was asking for you. Get up and show your face. <gasps> Joseph! This suppliers. What did you bring me? Very fine sand. Even though I've dropped half of it on your floor. You've been away from Jerusalem for a long time, haven't you? You don't know what's happened. I saw three crosses on Golgotha. There are two thieves and a saint. Jesus of Nazareth. He died this afternoon. I don't understand. Now they're after his followers. We must keep our eyes open. Are you afraid? I didn't know you were one of them. It's not for me, but for my son. He followed him to Galilee. I came back with him this Passover. Oh, my son is a hothead.
them all disappeared, like rats leaving a sinking ship. For years, we endured the Nazarene's accusations and false claims, fearing a revolt. Instead, you see, it only took us a few hours to have him crucified and to get rid of all the beggars who followed him. Where are they now? Where's the revolt that everyone was afraid of? Jerusalem has no pity for those who lose. In a few days, he will be forgotten. I went to him, and I heard him speak. I never once heard him speak of starting an uprising. He's right. That's true. That's I agree. Yes, right. indeed. Yes. Indeed. Yes. indeed. Yes. indeed. But those who didn't come to hear him treated him like an instigator because they were afraid that the people would follow him and abandon them. Yes, yes. yes. cowards! Yes. Yes. Pharisees, hypocrites! That's what he called you. He should have thrown you out of the temple along with the merchants. That boy has courage. You killed him because you were afraid, because he could read in your hearts. Make him stop. But he will return and destroy you. You, the temple, and all Jerusalem. Enough, boy. Go away. <laughs> Matthias, are you hiding? I was with him, Joseph. We're all in danger. Don't be afraid. He said he would return. days before the feast day, which the Jews call Passover, the high priest Caiaphas had a man brought before me. His name was Jesus, a Galilean, so that he be judged by me. Since the Sanhedrin could not hand down a death penalty. I questioned the man, but I didn't find any motive to condemn him. I told Caiaphas, but despite my attempts to avoid having him put to death, he and his colleagues insisted they would have none of it. No, they would have none of it. Since he was a subject of Herod's, and Herod was in Jerusalem at the time, I sent him to be judged by him. I gave me no choice. They forced me to. Um, uh, should I write that as well? No, no. Certainly not. What have you written so far? Sent him to be judged by him. What's the matter now? Jesus of Nazareth was a just man. You said so and no one had anything to fear from him.
That's exactly why your friends had him crucified. But I've washed my hands of all that blood. Those are my countrymen, not my friends, illustrious pilot. In fact, now I've come to ask you for his body, to bury him according to the traditions of our people. Is he dead already? Yes. Ask your soldiers, pilot. Is he dead? Yes. He died at three in the afternoon. Very well. He can have the body. Go then. I'd like to buy a sheet. Uh, it's late. I, I've closed for today. I know, but I hope you will do me this favor. Oh. Um, I've got one of raw linen. It's two cubits long. That will do fine. Here you are. The shroud's for him, isn't it? Yes, it's for him. Here. After the Sabbath, we'll come back with other spices and perfumes to complete the burial.
We must leave Jerusalem. If not, they'll find us and kill us. No. Better wait here a little longer. And anyway... Anyway, the Master promised us something. That imposter said he would rise from the dead after three days. Well, we'll see that no one takes advantage of this. See, those are Jesus' enemies. Earthquake! Run for your life! Woman, why are you crying? Woman, who are you looking for? You've taken him away. Tell me where you've hidden him and I'll go to him. Do you want money? Mary.
now that you've seen me. Go, and tell my disciples I am risen. The tomb in which Jesus was laid is empty. John's Gospel tells of how Mary Magdalene and the other women came to the tomb to complete the burial anointing and find the tomb completely empty. They run to inform Peter and John, who then see the empty tomb for themselves but don't understand. Troubled, they return to their homes. Mary Magdalene remains at the tomb in tears. She soon senses the presence of someone, someone whom she supposes to be the gardener, but then she hears his voice. It is Jesus who calls her by name, Mary. She recognizes him and replies, Rabbi, which means master. Jesus speaks to her and tells her to go and tell everyone that he is risen from the dead. All three Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke also refer to this event. They write that the women enter the tomb and find an angel seated on the right-hand side of the tomb. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here and Mark underscores the fact that he is risen as he said he would. All three evangelists record the angel as having said, He is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him just as he told you. Luke's Gospel records these words of the angel addressed to the women. Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? Remember what he told you when he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man had to be handed over into the power of sinful men and be crucified and rise again on the third day. And this is exactly what happened. After these events, as mentioned in the first three Gospels, he appeared to many who not only ate meals with him, but touched him as well. St. Paul, in his first letter to the Christians at Corinth, writes, After Jesus had risen from the dead, he appeared first to the Apostle Peter and secondly to the Twelve. Next, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, many of whom are still alive. Then, he appeared to James, and last of all, he appeared to me too, the least of the Apostles. And for those who continue to doubt the resurrection of Jesus, St. Paul adds, if Christ has not been raised, then our faith is useless. But Christ has in fact been raised from the dead. And when the moment comes, when the last trumpet sounds for us too, our present perishable nature must put on imperishability, and this mortal nature must put on immortality. Then the words of the scriptures will come true. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is a promise of resurrection and salvation for every one of us, the Word of God. <laughs>